Hi, this is Billy here at PowerStrokeHelp.com. I'm going to talk today about EGR cooler failure in a 6.7. This is an EGR cooler in a 6.7, and as you can see, one whole side of this thing is clogged up, so the, it, no flow through here, so the EGR system became clogged. And I have behind me a 6.4. This is not a 6.7 engine, but I want to talk about the comparison of these two. This particular truck had uh, 120,000 miles on it, but it had almost 2,500 hours of idle time on it, which meant the truck sat a lot. It was an ambulance. A lot of times ambulances get idle day and night so that they are ready to go down the road. It's a mindset that, uh, that the emergency uh, response people have that the truck needs to be running. This particular one came from downtown Atlanta. 120,000 hard, hard miles put on this truck and, and probably hasn't been shut off in two years except for maintenance. That being said, uh, it uh, you know it's outside of warranty. Um, it's a longtime customer of mine um, that uh, that brought this to me, uh, and they they did just didn't want to get thrown under the bus. They they didn't have confidence in the dealers that, that they'd been dealing with, you know. So so we end up with it. Now the interesting thing about a six seven is that it of course has an EGR system uh, and and requires a cooler. The 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 actual exhaust will run through this cooler and cool it down before it goes into the intake. Exhaust gas recirculation, EGR, means that exhaust gas goes back and gets reintroduced into the intake and is run through the engine and burnt one more time. It's the same idea as a gasoline motor. Uh, it reduces the nasty stuff that comes out the tailpipe. You have to, we have to live in the world that we live in with the government regulations saying that there's only so much can come out the tailpipe. This is part of the system. Because of the design of the 6.7 and the way the intake comes from the outside instead of where the exhaust manifold on a 6.4 is there's an in, that's where the intake is and it comes up to the turbo what happens is it passes through the EGR valve first so that the EGR valve is on the hot end which keeps the EGR valve on a 6.7 clean but it goes through the one side of the EGR cooler and then out the other side and so this is the cool side the cool side of the EGR system regardless of whether the valves on the beginning end or the back end is going to be the side that clogs. Okay, when the engine, a diesel engine doesn't create heat like a gasoline engine. A diesel engine creates heat only when it's under load. So when it's idling, it's running very, very cold. If the if the diesel engine is not being pushed, then it's not going to burn off these hydrocarbons, especially with idle times like this. You know, where a truck will sit for 10 or 12 or 14 hours just idling, and so you get this buildup inside. So this is a common. EGR clog, we've seen several of these. Pair, I want you to understand a little bit more about the 6.4 and why the 6.7 is such an improvement over the 6.4. There's nothing you can do about this. This is a fact of life. You cannot stop coking in the EGR system due to idle. I don't care what kind of design you got, it's impossible. You know, whether it's a Chevrolet Dodge, Ford, you know, it, Cat, whatever. Idle time will clog up the intake system. It's just a fact of life. Because the EGR valve is on the hot side of the 6.7 and all the, the carbon gets burnt off, it's very, very seldom a problem. So that expensive component stays clean. On a 6.4 though, your EGR gases come in at the back here at the, in, uh, at the back here of your lower EGR cooler, go through the upper EGR cooler, and then the cold part is over here where the valve is. So the valves were constantly, I can't even tell you how many of these things my mechanics have had to literally jackhammer with, it, with an air chisel out of here because there was so much carbon built up in this intake. But if the valve had been on the back side here where it was hot, it wouldn't have been a problem. So this was a design improvement. The other design improvement is the cost of replacement. You've got two EGR coolers on a 6.4. Six uh, the lower one I know is, is upwards of $500. The upper one is upper to $400. Uh, you usually have to replace both of them, and there's a tremendous amount of labor here. It's, it's in a 6.4, just simply by the design and the cost of the parts, you can be $1,600, $1,800 putting an EGR cooler uh, replacement on a 6.4, plus the little hoses and all the other little crap that goes along with it. In a 6.7, though, they made it simpler. These guys at Ford, when they got away from the Navistar, they remember now, this is an international Navistar engine. This engine is the new Ford Scorpion engine that's made in-house at Ford. So Ford, uh, the Ford guys, the Ford engineers sat down and said, hey look, let's make the maintenance a little cheaper and easier. So it's only three hours to replace this. So your labor cost is much, much lower than it is to disassemble half the damn engine at 6.4. And of course, being in the truck, it's very, very difficult to get at these things because you have all these things in the way. 
And this is a very easy piece to get to on a 6.7. It comes right out. It's, it's less than, I think it's three hours. And then the part is actually cheaper. It's, it's right around $300 in the other. So this bill, to replace this, is considerably cheaper. As, as far as what does it take to keep these things from clogging, just take the thing down and go down the road and blow the carbon out of it. It's like the old days, man. Got to go down and drop the hammer and, and keep running it until the smoke quits coming out the tailpipe, and then it'll, it'll clean itself. But there is no no cure for coking up the EGR cooler with idle time. If you're idling the vehicle all day and all night, this is what's going to happen.